Good morning. How's everyone this morning? Everybody say blessed. Amen. Amen. Happy you're in the house this morning. I'm so happy you made the decision to be here. Amen. And first of all, I just want to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Amen. To the men. Amen. Praise God. Our prayer will be that they have an influence from our godly father. Amen. Praise God. Happy Father's Day to those here, those viewing. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand and open the service. I'd like to welcome you. Welcome those viewing on Facebook and YouTube. Father God, we just come before you this morning, Lord God, and we just give you praise and honor, Lord God. Lord, this is the day you have made, Father God, and we choose to rejoice in it this morning, Father God. We choose to give you honor and praise this morning, Lord God. Lord God, that your hand would be upon this service, Father God. Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, that your tangible presence is here for us, Father God. Lord God, this morning, Lord God, as we honor you, our Father in heaven, Father God. Lord God, that your will would be done this morning, Lord God. Not only in this house, Father God, uh, in the homes of those viewing, Father God, Lord God, in all the surrounding churches, Father God, that your hand would be involved, Father God, that we as man, Lord God, would get out of the way, Father God, and allow you to do what needs to be done, Father God. Lord, this morning, I lift up all the surrounding churches once again, Father God. Lord God, may they love on you today, Lord. May they welcome you, Lord God. May they experience you today, Father God. Lord, this morning, Lord God, we lift up our leaders, Father God, those that are appointed, those that are elected, Father God, our president, our vice president, Lord God, those in council and senate, Father, the Congress, Father God, Lord God, that you would be on the throne and they would recognize that you are still on the throne, Father God. Lord God, that we are one nation under God, indivisible, that means undivided, Father God, so we pray for our leaders this morning, Father God. Lord, we lift up our council here, Lord God, the UNOU tribe council, Father God. I speak salvation over this reservation, Father God. Lord, those that already know you, Father God, may their boldness and a courage come over them, Father God, that they would be accountable for the decisions they're making, Lord God. I just thank you for our leaders, Lord God. We just praise you for our leaders, Father God. We speak my mighty men and mighty women of God in our leadership today, Father God. Lord, this morning, Lord God, we stand with Israel, Father God. We speak peace to Jerusalem, Father God. Your chosen people, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, your, your peace flow in that land, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord, we love you this morning, Father God. Yes, the love of the Father, Lord Lord, yada da da sakoi, Lord God. Isha kori mi yada da da sai, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your love, Father God, your compassion this morning, Father. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, we lift up all those that are affiliated with the First Nations, Father God. Lord God, that they would seek your face, Father God. Your word says, if my people who are called by my name, your name, Lord God, would seek you, Lord. Lord, would turn from our wicked ways, Lord God, that you would hear from heaven, Father God. You would forgive us, Father God. You would restore the land, Father God. This morning, Father God, we speak restoration, Father God, recompense, restitution, Father God, throughout this land, Father God, through this Uena Basin, through the state of Utah, through our nation, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, we thank you, Father that you are the healer, Father God. Even in this time, Father God, Lord God, signs, wonders, miracles, Lord God, and healing, Father God. The rhema word that we can take hold of, Father God. Even in this house, Father God, we release your healing rivers, Father God. Right now, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, those viewing, Father God, your healing virtue, go forth, Father God. This morning, Lord, right now, touch the backs that 
that are in pain, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord God, remove the migraines right now, Father God. You are Jehovah Rapha. Yes, you are, Lord, the God who heals, Father God. And I thank you, Lord, that your foot is upon this COVID, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord God. Lord, we love you this morning. We need you this morning. Lord, provide Jehovah Jireh. Yes, provide for us our needs, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name, for you are the way maker, Father God. Make a way, Lord God. This morning, I remove all hindrance and distraction right now in the mighty name of Jesus that we would be focused on you. We would have the Kavana prayer, Lord God, to be focused on the one, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we come before you. We honor you, Lord. We worship you this morning, and we say, have your way, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
Woo! <laughs> 
Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, lift up your holy hands. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. I'd like to welcome you to the house of the Lord once again. Amen. Good to have you. Good to have the daddies in the house. Amen. Welcome those viewing. Good to have you. Praise God. God's good. Amen. God is good. God is good. You know, I want to share Monday night. I, I just, yes, Lord. <laughs> I'm just going to say yes, Lord. Monday night in prayer, we were praying, and I, all I kept hearing and sensing is that the healer's here. The healer's in the house. Amen? The healer's in the house. And I just want you all to take hold of that this morning. Amen? Because it doesn't only have to be a physical he healing. Amen? Some of us need that, that spiritual healing, right? Praise God. And I just praise him for that this morning because, you know, he has healed me mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally, you know, and he has been faithful, amen, he has been faithful, and he is just in that healing, you know, you want to testify what he's done, and, and, and I love how pastor says, when you bring testimony, you're telling God to do it again, amen, and so I know that God is a healer, amen, God is a healer, he's a miracle worker, amen, God is a God that will turn your darkness into light, amen, Amen. Your anger and your sadness into joy. Come on now. Amen. He will bring that anger into joy. You know, because I don't know what's going on in, in, in behind your doors, but God sees you. Amen. Nothing gets past him. Amen. And he's there for you. He's willing. All you got to do is call upon him. Amen. So you can whisper Jesus and the demons flee. Amen. Amen. You don't have to shout out Jesus, but it's always better, I think. <laughs> the earth rumbles, amen. There's a rumbling that comes on when you, you know, when you say Jesus, amen. Yeah. When you say Jesus, amen. Lover of our soul, amen. So I just want to encourage you this morning. God is here for you, amen. God is there with you, you know, where you're, wherever you're viewing, wherever you're watching. God is there. He is everywhere, amen. And so I just want to encourage you. You need to get a hold of him. You really need to get a hold of him because he wants to heal you, amen. He wants to show you his love, amen. He wants to give you that humility, you know, so you, you can humble yourself and forgive others, amen. We struggle on that. Come Come on, my family knows me. God knows me better. But hey, he has worked a miracle in me. Amen. So I just want to encourage you. Amen. Signs, wonders, miracles, and healing. And it doesn't just have to be physical. Inside out. Amen. Let him heal you from the inside out. Amen. Some of you needs to hear that. Amen. God wants to heal you from the inside out. Amen. No more coming to church and saying, I'm okay. And then going home and looking in the mirror and then counterdicting what God has done. Amen. He's your healer. So receive that. Amen. God is good this morning. Amen. So in that day, we'll change your order of service. <laughs> let's, let's go ahead and take up tithes and offering first. Amen. Brother Jared, would you please? Thank you. spoke a word and you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so I'm 
Tomorrow night, Monday night, 7 o'clock, we have prayer here, amen. Wednesday, Bible study here, 7 o'clock, amen. Be here. <laughs> I have a big, good announcement. I know you you lovers of food. Eh? So on um, June 27th, the last Sunday of the month, we're going to start our potluck fellowship after church. So bring a side dish, amen. Bring you on your favorite dishes to share. Ashley, don't sit in the corner and eat your own. <laughs> If you will, I'll bring my chili verde and sit in the other corner. <laughs> but amen, I want you all to come out, amen, in fellowship, amen, praise God. Well, let's, we're not having children's church because we have a special service today, but let's go ahead and have the children come on up and we'll pray a blessing over them and we'll get, get moving in the word, amen. Woo-woo for the kids, amen. Woo-woo-woo. I just want... Lord, I, I just want to thank you, Lord, Heavenly Father, for all these children, Lord. And I just want to um, just talk about what I read this morning about Elohim. I, I believe I'm saying it right. It's S-H-A-M-A, -A, Shema, Shema, the God that's all-knowing. And, um, you know, this morning when I was reading and I, I was thinking about the kids, and it says that um, when I was reading it was talking about how God knows everything everything in our mind and, and even in our hearts, you know, he's really attentive to everything that we think of. And I, and I was thinking about these kids and I was like, man, Lord, how can I relay it to them so that they understand, you know, and at times, you know, maybe when you're in school and you, you think that you can't do anything, um, over, over, overcome the obstacle, but God's right there and he's in your heart. And he's letting you know that he, you're going to come through it and you can do it. Um, but I just want to pray, Lord, that, you know, these little ones would receive it this morning, Lord, that they would understand, Lord, that in their minds and in their heart, that God knows everything about us. God knows everything about our thoughts, you know, and everywhere that we go and everything that we do and everything that we see. But I, I just pray that it's a covering, Lord, over them this morning and that, and that they would just grow and mature in that, and that they would just begin to realize, Lord, that you're there for them, and that you know everything that's going on in their lives, in their families' lives. They each represent a different home, Lord Heavenly Father, but I pray, Lord, that, you know, when they see things that are out of not right, Lord, that they would just speak a prayer for their mom, for their dad, for their aunties, and for their uncles, Lord, even their grandmas, Lord Heavenly Father. And I just really appreciate you, Lord, this morning. And I thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Praise God for our children. Amen. Woohoo. Well, hey. <laughs> I was just asking her where she wanted to be, but she's ready. But I want us all to stand, amen, and welcome a w the woman of God, amen. Yes, yes, woo-woo, we have the prophetess in the house, <laughs> the pastor in the house, the sister in the house, the friend in the house, amen, the intercessor in the house, amen, amen, Tracy Loosely, amen. We're blessed to have you, welcome. So we're going we're gonna to bless this offering and the anointing oil here. This is my blood mantle for the blood of Jesus. And I've just been really pressing in and honoring the blood. And I, there's such an expectation in my heart that the healer is in the house. And he's going to heal so many areas of our lives. And don't worry about the children. I, I, I love when the children, when I go to other nations and the children are in the meetings, it's like we just, God comes and he visits them and he speaks to them and ministers to them. And so it's the Father's heart that they're here with us today. It's Father's Day and we're listening to the Father's heart. And so I'm going to open with some words of knowledge and prayer and then I'll go into the message. And before I give the words of knowledge, um, for healing, where I'm going to release this decree over you, and you can you can stand, you can sit. I'm going to be going in and out of the Word of God, of course. We've got the written word today, and we've got the Rama word. Hallelujah! Right? <laughs> Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, I thank you, Lord God, that you are here with us today, and you are awakening us to the Spirit of Truth. Truth, who is Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Truth that pierces through darkness. Truth that releases the power to deliver, to save, to heal. The truth, Lord God, you are awakening us to your truth. So we give you all the glory, Lord God. And Father, just as we, are, we were singing, I surrender. I surrender all. I want more of you, God. I want to know you, God. Lord, that is our cry. And we don't want to impede anyone's view of who you are because we want you to be magnified and you to be glorified and you to be lifted up, Lord Jesus. So we give you all the glory and all the honor today. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want to decree this over to you. The Lord spoke this to me at the beginning of this year as he began to show me that we were moving from this time of what this last season has been where he spoke to me last year a, a whole journey and I'm now we're on a different side of this that I'm going to share some things with you. But as he spoke this word to me at the beginning of this year, he said, obedience. It is love choosing to look in love's eyes, saying yes with full assurance of his goodness. Obedience. It is the cruciform life, and that means it's a cross-shaped life. It's taking up our daily cross and laying down our will to be pierced through with his will. It is like ear piercing. His love pierces us and his grace adorns us and marks us. For him it was nails piercing his flesh as he took every sin and darkness so we could live in his light. His look of love to the one who cries out for mercy. His words of liberation today. You will be with me in paradise. Nothing said to the haters except the most powerful prayer. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. No condemning look. No pointing finger. 
Talk about disagreeing views and opinions. Mm. Talk about accusations and lies and verdicts of hell. What looked like death, death and dead promises hanging on that cursed tree. The cross of shame. Yet, what was not known or seen. Haha, remember this? The Sunday of all Sundays is coming. <laughs> A true North Star, the morning star. Hope shook the hills and mountains. It didn't look like hope or what natural eyes perceive as hope. It didn't sound like hope. The sound that sent shock waves as running and hiding feet slipped on shaky foundations. The silent pause, the sting of death, graves unearthed, the walking dead who had hoped in times past, who had believed but did not see until now. Yeah, until now, when all eternity watched an era end. And they waited for the emerging epoch, an epic shift, a sea change moment, a marker in history where even how time was recorded shifted from B.C. to A.D., before Christ, after death, an appearing of promise fulfilled. Every stripe, every lash, every pierce released in fury purchased grace. <laughs> released hope, an epoch of Christ's church was birthed. And now an era has ended. And the daughter of God, the enemy of God, attempts to silence and kill. Ah, but he will not win. Because Christ is coming again, his bride awakening. She was fashioned in his split open side, the cleft of the rock hidden in secret glory until the day the next epoch began to appear. She, his bride, his ecclesia, his church, his people, warrior lovers, overcomers awakened to truth. A sleeping giant awakened to the knowledge we occupy until he comes. I want to say that over you again because it was before I came here last time, that the Lord spoke to me that the sleeping giant was waking up. And as I began to look more into that and listen to him, and he's still saying it, a sleeping giant awakens to the knowledge. We occupy until he comes. We stand, we believe. We stand, we believe. We stand, we believe, we stand, we believe, we stand, we believe, we stand. Because in him we are one. We are the answer to his final prayer, his last supper as a man. As he revealed his communion, his body broken, the bread, his body was the bread, the living bread, he's the bread of life. His blood poured out the wine of the new covenant his covenant, his promise to remember him, to do often until we are joined and reunited with him once again. Hallelujah. Yeah. He has never failed to keep a promise, and he is not going to fail now. He has never, ever lost a battle, and he did not lose this one now. He is coming with his harvest sickle, and he is coming with his sword. Oh, yet remember, oh, little ones empowered by grace. <laughs> Why God is coming is for his harvest and for his bride. We do not know as they knew not what the Sunday of all Sundays would be. We don't know. They didn't know. They didn't know. Ha. Huh. <laughs> so keep on loving and keep on believing and keep on trusting and keep on fighting the good and faithful fight and keep on standing on the Lord's side. Today, this day, choose the path of life. Keep on believing. Keep on trusting. Keep on standing. See, you see, when Jesus arose, and he will never have to hang on that tree again, he already run the battle. 
And when he arose, he appeared to each one of his people that loved him. The first one he appeared to was Mary, who was grief-stricken. And so he appears to us in our grief. And he speaks to us. He walked through the walls where his disciples were, the ones who were afraid and fearful for their very lives. He walks in to them, the ones who betrayed him, the ones who ran, and they were hiding. And he appears, and he speaks to them, and he says, peace be with you. And when he spoke those words, when he looked at Mary, when he looked at his followers, when he speaks these words, what he's saying is wholeness be with you. And so as I release these words of knowledge that the Lord's been giving, and I invite Linnell to come up, and we're just going to do a little bit of um, releasing. Just know that all throughout this time, if you have a need, uh, let me tell you the miracle working power of God is here. Because what he's been reminding me, and I'm going to give you a message of what I've had to walk through to get back to that place of remembering how faithful and good he is. Because it hasn't been easy. But he is good. And so I don't want you to think I've had this perfect life and this perfect walk even in this past year and a half. It was hard. Yet God, in his goodness. And I've been seeing the first time when I, when I was on a mission trip and I saw deaf ears open. When I prayed for that little boy. And the Spirit of the Lord came and opened up his ear. He'd been deaf since birth. And then that little one, that boy, became my prayer partner in the meetings the rest of the few days that we were there. Well, I'm telling you, let the little ones come. Because God wants to pour out his Spirit on them and use them as well. Fill them with miracle-working power. I remember standing in front of the one as God recreated their eye, and I watched this eye. I can't even describe what I was seeing. And he's been reminding me of his goodness as I watched God recreate that eye at the name of Jesus and through the power of the blood. And once again, beginning to pray this morning that that would happen here. Because God can, and he will, and he does. But let me tell you about the time I was leading intercession, and I was in Brazil. And the Spirit of the Lord came, and it came, the power of God came upon one of the ones in the prayer room, and they flew in the power of God, and they hit and landed on my foot and opened it up. But yet, I was on the watcher's wall, and I was leading intercession for the revival meetings. And even though there was blood and it was a lot of pain, I stayed in the presence of God, and his glory came. And I led worship, I led intercession prayer on my back as a couple of other people prayed for my foot. And by the end of intercession, and I'm telling you, the Lord came in such glory in the meetings where there were miracles and healings and signs and wonders. Let me tell you, they said, Tracy, it looks broken, but we're praying. And they were praying. I'm just, God knit it all back together. And you couldn't even see where it had opened up except one little place. And the Lord said, that little place of that scar is there to remind you that I'm the healer. See, the enemy was trying to get me to not do what I was called to do. He was trying to get my eyes on my circumstance instead of being on the wall as the watchman, as the one who was leading the group to pray, to pray for salvation, to pray for healing, to pray for deliverance. He was trying to take me out. But when God puts us on a post, we've got to stand and we've got to believe. So I'm sharing with you, I know the miracle worker. I know who he is. So I'm going to just release these words and have Linnell come up. And if she has anything to share. And then I'm going to go into the word of God for today. 
and just hold on because God's got something so good for you. And those of you that are watching, the anointing is not limited to a building or a space. The power of the Holy Spirit can be anywhere. And I'm telling you, get ready to receive, get ready to receive, get ready to receive. So as I've been waiting upon the Lord, the words of knowledge began last night. And I, I just, the Lord wants to heal kidneys. If anybody has a kidney, raise your hand. Uh, anybody right here? I'm telling you, the miracle working power, I felt the fluttering miracle working power of God. I'm like, Linnell, what's this? What's this? She's like, that's where your kid, one of your kidneys are. And I'm like, yes, God, you're going to heal the kidney. You're going to heal, I mean, you know, it's sometimes like when you're in this place. And so right now, let's just go ahead and pray. Well, there might be more than one for you, darling. <laughs> I, I believe the Lord is healing hip joints, hips that have pain. It's painful to sit, walk, different things. He wants to heal hips, shoulders. I'm telling you, um, okay, I was getting a word of knowledge here in the shoulder. I was getting it over here. I was getting it back here. If you have shoulder pain, just say, you know what? I need my shoulder healed. It might be you on watching live, but I'm telling you, God is here and he's able to heal. He is a, oh, she's moving. She's going that. Yep. I'm telling you, I, I'm, I'm telling you, these are not my pains. <laughs> I know what a word of knowledge is. Okay, stomach issues, digestive, like just an upset in there, and it you just, it just, okay, is that you back here? I got a few of you, huh? God wants to touch your stomach. What the enemy has done to destroy the very way God has created you, and um, as, as Linnell shares, no, I really feel I got to share. Part of my message is to share a testimony, and I feel like I need to share it right now, but it's part of the message. But let me tell you, I had a really bad fall in October. It didn't seem like that bad of a fall, but it took my neck out, and I had such horrible and neck pain. I couldn't sleep. I could hardly eat and drink because even hot or cold caused so much pain in my jaw, and I was like this for a while. Until one day, and I was getting some help, different things, and I was pressing into the Lord, but I was also going and getting some therapy done because I just wasn't, it was so, so much pain. But one day I was just like, I've seen you, God, do miracles. And I'm praying with a friend. And we began to speak about the promises of God and the things that we've seen him do and what he has spoken about the end time and about the, the just so many prophetic words we've heard about the miracles that would come and the divine healing, the divine health, and the divine life. So I began to sit with Jesus and speak over myself that the power of the blood of Jesus and the oil of glory through the Holy Spirit it brings me divine healing, divine health, and divine life. And I'm telling you, I haven't been back for therapy in a couple months. God healed me. Okay? I'm telling you, I know things happen, you know? But God, but God. All right. I just have a couple of things. First of all, it's so good to be back with you. I can't tell you how full of love my heart is for you and I know you probably think well you don't know me well knowing you is not a requirement for God's love there's just great compassion in my heart for you and so um I've been where did she go oh she's behind me okay um, I have been um this morning when I was praying for you I heard the word oasis I I didn't realize um that that was a word for you guys until I got here and I went around the back and I was like oh Oasis Training Center, but the thing that he, in my, my mind, immediately went to, this is a place, but the Lord very clearly wanted me to tell you that you are the oasis. Each of you, he said, each of the ones that are sitting here today are called to be my oasis for this land, that you are the place of refreshment for the people that come in contact with you, and he has been sending you streams of refreshing, cleansing, bringing healing for those deep wounded places. But he said, now get ready for the deluge. And this is going to be like a dunamis moment 
where it hits you and it springs out from you like beams of light. I don't know if you've ever seen, or like a sprinkler, I think it would be the best words, and it's pull, you know, twisted up to full steam ahead and it's spouting all over the place. Well, that's like, that's the, the love of Christ coming forth from you, refreshing people who have never truly known love before will cross your path and experience love for the very first time. Healing, freedom, refreshing. So, Lord, we thank you for your healing power, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your miracle-working power, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father, for your grace and your glory, Lord Jesus. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that you said you were going to heal. And over and over, you were reminding of the times that you have. And God, you're faithful to your word. And we believe you and every promise, Lord God. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus... Father, we pray for backs and hips. Lord, I release the power of the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach. Father, I pray right now that the miracle-working power of the Lord Jesus would flow by the power of your precious Holy Spirit, the dunamis miracle-working power. Father, we pray, Lord God, for kidneys and organs, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we release resurrection power in Jesus' name through the blood of the Lamb. Father, I pray for stomachs and shoulders. Father, for every issue, if there's barrenness. Father, if there's any kind of sickness or even symptoms or things um, that have happened after having anything, Lord God, that you would wipe away every residual of any virus or sickness or disease. I speak resurrection power into the very muscles of shoulders and Father God into the very places in the back, in the neck, in Jesus' name. And Father, I speak to those who have longed and longed and longed to see promises that they've waited for for decades and decades. Father, that those promises would begin to manifest now. In the name of Jesus, his miracle working power is going to begin to flow. So let's just stay connected with him. Thank you, Jesus. So I have like this little buffet. So that's why I was like, I think I need the bigger one. <laughs> I think we can do this. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> we'll just navigate, navigate so I can be a little closer here. Anyways, thank you, Jesus. So the title of the message that I have for you today is From Bitterness to Delight. From Bitterness to Delight. <laughs> James 1.12 said, Blessed is a man who perseveres under trial. For once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let me talk to you about the crown of life. So I told you in the fall I had a, a pr pretty, I was knocked off my feet by my cute little puppy and my daughter's big puppy. <laughs> it just knocked off, flew in the air, fell, bounced, not good. And it was so discouraging for me because since we had moved back to Utah and we moved into our home, our uh, brand new appliances would show up broken or things would break. All these things, they, there was damage, all this different stuff that was going on and all these different things happening. And I was having to fight discouragement after discouragement and really even having a hard time believing, did, why would God have moved me away for only 14 months and, you know, bring me back? Why would he have taken me from the center we had planted in the place that I loved and, and just, and the vision was beginning to flourish and all of these things. And it's like, I don't want to ask why, but Lord, could you show me what you're doing in all of this? And then this fall happened. And when the fall happened and the pain was so excruciating, I found myself fighting bitterness I found myself in such a place of, 
hope deferred. I found myself saying, woman of God, woman of faith, you who walk many people through into the promise, you who have stood and leaped and yelled and all this and the joy of the Lord that manifest on your life, where's your joy? I had no joy. I'd lost it. And I'd sit with the Lord and say, God, I need joy because the joy of the Lord is my strength. And he began to speak to me about the revelation about one of the meanings in the New Testament of joy is a peaceful calm. And when I could step into that, it truly helped. God wants to restore to us this crown of joy. In Philippians 4, the apostle's writing a letter and he speaks to the people and he says, Therefore, my beloved brethren whom I long to see, my joy and crown in this way, stand firm in the Lord, my beloved. He says to them, you are my joy and my crown. And God wants to say to you, his people, you are his joy and his crown. And he wants to restore to you this place of joy. There are many of you that will be watching this that you aren't even able to get out. And there's this place where you feel so isolated and you feel paralyzed by grief or paralyzed by fear or paralyzed by circumstances and situations, yet God, yet God is about to release resurrection power and renew hope in your life and renew to you the very promises that he has been speaking for decades and decades and even thousands of years. Yet to us, they're new, but for some of us, we've been contending for 10, 20, 30 years for promises. And the Lord has been speaking that now is a time we will begin to see him do some things, even though the circumstances don't look like that but he's so much bigger than the circumstances and he wants to be God in first Thessalonians 2 19 the apostle says for who is our hope or joy or our crown of exaltation is it not even you is it not even you why would I share these scriptures? <laughs> Is it not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus at his coming? Because there's going to be an appearing of the Lord. There's a move of God that's already begun. On our way here, there was no forecast of rain. There was no forecast of that at all. And we get out of Park City and coming in through Heber and into the valley, and the rain clouds are appearing. And the rain clouds were with us all the way here till we got to our hotel. And the whole time we are worshiping and praising the Lord. You see, I pay attention to what God does in the natural because he's speaking about what, he does, he, what he's really doing in the supernatural, in the spiritual realm. The last time we were here, there were winds. And he'd been speaking about the winds that were coming to bring forth um, the, the promises of God, the wild winds <laughs> that come from gratitude and thankfulness. His rain is coming. These clouds were there. They were over us. She has a sunroof with it. Open the, it's like they were there. We didn't open it, open it, because it was actually raining. So even in drought, the Lord will release his rains. We must believe God. We must believe God. And you've got to see yourself the way God sees you. You are sons and daughters. We are not orphans. We are not slaves. We are not victims. Yes, things have happened to us. Yes, life has been hard. Before I knew Jesus... Life was extremely hard. What got better with knowing Jesus is I now have hope and strength and joy that take me through every circumstance. Life isn't perfect, 
But I overcome every single thing that the enemy tries to put on me because God is greater and he is bigger, greater is he who's in us than he was in this world. So he wants us to know who he is and who he wants to be to us. This week, the Lord awoke me on Tuesday morning at 351. And I sat there and I prayed and I'm like, Lord, what are you saying? And I prayed. And then I fell back asleep for a little bit. And then when I awoke and he said, now get up, it was, it was still quite early. I wasn't, didn't fall back asleep long. And he began to speak to me about some things for you. And then when I was like, Lord, I felt like you already gave me a message. And, and then a couple days ago, I had a dream. And these scriptures that I'm going to share and share with you tie right in with the message he'd already given. And, he, and I, op- I awoke to seeing scriptures in front of me in a vision. And so I'm like, this is God. So this is from the Father, you guys. This is what he is saying. So in Genesis 35, 1, it says, Then God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and live there, and make an altar there to God, who appeared to you when you fled from your brother Esau. The word arise there, what it means is to stand up, get established, be confirmed, be valid, to be proven, and to be fulfilled. So the Lord is saying, arise, stand up. I'm confirming you. I'm getting you established. I'm fulfilling my promises to you. I am for you. Arise, arise. And he said, go up, go up, go up to Bethel. To go up means to ascend, to meet So he's saying, come and meet with me because this is what his invitation is. And it's rising up and to excel. And Bethel means house of God. So come up to the house of God. You're here today. You're with us. We're in his presence. His house is a heavenly place. And he says there, live there, which means to dwell, to abide, and to inhabit. So arise and go up and live and dwell and build. Build me an altar. Make me an altar. Build me an altar. An altar is a place of sacrifice unto the Lord. The altar of the Lord. Jesus, when he was crucified, when he went in, when he was crucified, what he did was one of the things was he took his blood and he took it to the mercy seat, the altar in heaven, the mercy seat. He put his blood there. And so the Lord's kind of saying, come up and meet me with me there where the blood is. Come up and let's build together the kingdom of God from this position of the blood of Jesus where I make you complete. When you ascend and come to this place, you're going to come into the fullness of Christ. The altar is a place to lay your disappointments down. So whatever disappointed you, whatever you're having to push through right now, put it on his altar and let the blood of Jesus come on it. Put it at the altar. Come up to this place. Come up to the house of God and place your disappointment and your burdens down. Jacob experienced much disappointment, yet God was calling him to come and encounter him. And Jacob was about to come into the land of his promise after disappointment, after disappointment, after disappointment. Let's look at Naomi. (laughs) Last year when I was still living in California and I I came out to Utah and um, we didn't know for sure if we were moving back. And so I was at the Abundance Center ministering, and the word the Lord has given me is, is part of this word. And it's from Ruth 1, 19 through 21, and then we'll look at some other chapters in Ruth. But in Ruth 19, 21, it says, So they both went until they came to Bethlehem. And when they had come to Bethlehem, all the city was stirred because of them. And the woman said, Is this Naomi? And she said to them, Do not call me Naomi, but call me 
Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why do you call me Naomi? Since the Lord has witnessed against me and the Almighty has afflicted me. Little did I know I was prophesying to myself. <laughs> Because when the Lord reminded me about this message that I had shared on 2-22-2020, a, a few months ago, reminded me about this. He said, Tracy, I told you it was going to be difficult. I told you it was going to be hard. But don't let it make you bitter. I told you upheaval was coming. But don't let it make you bitter. I told you some things were going to be very challenging. The enemy was going to manifest in such ways. But don't let it make you bitter. We had to go through some things, right? But the Lord is saying to us, we aren't going to remain in this bitter place. Because we're coming into a delightful and sweet era of the Lord. That's what epoch means. Epoch literally means the beginning of an era, okay? Era is the history of an era. <laughs> it's a time. It's a season. And we're coming into some things. The Lord really wants to highlight to you promises within the last decade. If you have a word from the Lord sometime in the last 10 to 20 years, maybe even be more than that. Look to God to see it soon. I'm telling you, there are soon appearing promises. I had a dream, and in this dream, a prophet was speaking to me. And he spoke very clearly a certain thing to me. He said, you're something. Who are you? And then he began to speak to me, and I'm not going to go into all of that. And at the end, he pushed me out the door. And when I woke up, it's like when he pushed me, I woke up. And, I, and the, it's like, Father, I'm kind of offended that he pushed me. <laughs> and the Lord's like, no, no, no. Go get the word this prophet gave me in 2003. Do you know how he started the word? You're something. What's your name? And then the Lord spoke to me and he said, this isn't just for you. This is where I send you. You need to speak to some people. You're something. Who does God say you are, daughter? warrior, faithful. You're something. Who are you? Who does he say? Stop believing what the enemy said. And then the Lord said to me, this word, which I received in 2003, is for now. There are promises in that prophetic word. It is many pages of handwritten when I described it because I didn't type it back then. So many promises for me, for my family, for ministry, for people I'm in relationship. So many promises about the prophetic realm. So many promises about the kingdom of God. And he says, this is for now. And I'm announcing to you, there are promises for now. They are now. They are not 10 years from now. They are now. They are now. What is the Lord putting in your spirit right now? Right now, right now. And one of those promises is this miracle working power and healing, healing for families, salvation for households. Let me tell you, God is on the move. I believe God. Do you know what Naomi means? Delight or my pleasantness. Yet she was calling herself Mara, which means bitterness. And she was calling herself that because of a calamities. How many of you are calling your life bitter and disappointment because of what we've walked through through a pandemic? Because we've lost people. We've lost things. There's been grief. There's been all of that. I understand I had to walk through grief. We, we've all had losses. But God always brings us through. He takes us to the other side. He does not leave us in that place. And he wants to restore us to the place where we recognize the crown of joy he's placed on our head. The crown of joy that he's placed upon us. Where we recognize 
the faithfulness of God. Let me tell you. How God has restored me, and I'm, I, I can't go into everything. I just don't have enough time, so I don't want to keep you here all day, but I would <laughs> because the Spirit of the Lord has so much to release. This just isn't enough. I have so much I want to share with you. I have so much what I want to impart from the Spirit of God, but I'm up here wrestling saying, Holy Spirit, what peace, what peace, what peace? What peace is one going to do what you sent me to do? What peace? What peace? So I'm pushing some things aside, and I'm listening because God has something very specific for you. So I just want to say a few more things about Naomi. She didn't have God's vision. The lens of her, of her heart were clouded by her dismal circumstances and losses. Her husband and sons had gone from the land of promise because there had been a famine, and they'd gone to the land of Moab, which Moab means ease, but there's the land of ease, but there's other things Moab means, and it's not good. <laughs> God doesn't always call us to ease. So to go back, when she went back with her daughter-in-law, she was bitter. She was disappointed. She'd lost her husband. She'd lost her sons. One daughter-in-law went with her. The other one went back to her own family. But God is calling us to a place to shift where we are. You see, if you, the whole story of Ruth, which you should go read, and I'm sure you've heard it preached, but he brings us from that place of bitterness into delight, which is her real name. Mara was bitter, but Naomi meant delight and pleasantness. And how did that happen? With all life's disappointments, how did that happen? Hope was found in the promise of a baby in her daughter-in-law's arms when Boaz intervened and redeemed. Boaz, a picture of Christ. Boaz representing how Christ redeems us from where the enemy would try to keep us in lack and sickness and despair. Boaz redeemed her because the one that should have wouldn't, but the one who could would, and that's how Jesus is. He's the only one that has all the answers to every issue and every place in life for us. He is the one. He is the one, and in Ruth Chapter 4, verse 13 and 16, I'm going to read about the birth of Obed, Naomi's grandson. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He wants me to read Psalm 35 first. This is one of the verses that he, woke me, that he awoke me to when I woke up the other morning. Psalm 35. And it's such a promise. We're going to read verse 1 and 10, and we're going to declare them as a prayer. In fact, why don't you stand up for the reading of this word? And the promise, if you can, if you don't want to, you don't have to. There's no pressure here. But remember, one of the things the Father has said to us is to stand. And if you can stand, stand. And if you don't feel to, you're fine. If you want to kneel, if you want to sit, freedom in the house. Contend, O Lord, with those who contend with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take hold of buckler and shield and rise up for my help. Draw also the spear and the battle axe to meet those who pursue me. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. 
Let those be ashamed and dishonored who seek my life. Let those be turned back and humiliated who devise evil against me. Let them be like chaff before the wind with the angel of the Lord driving them on. Let their way be dark and slippery with the angel of the Lord pursuing them. For without cause they hid their net for me. Without cause they dug a pit for my soul. Let destruction come upon him unawares. And let the net which he hid catch himself into that very destruction. Let him fall. And my soul, and my soul, say that with me. And my soul, and my soul shall rejoice in the Lord. It shall exult in his salvation. All my bones will say, Lord, who is like you? And I'll just read and declare over over us. Who delivers the afflicted from him who is too strong for him. And the afflicted and the needy from him who robs him. The Lord is about to show himself. When you talk about Jehovah Shema. He is about to reveal himself. Every name of God reveals who he is. He is Jehovah Sabaoth. The Lord of the angel armies. He is God and there is no other. God no matter what the demonic is doing no matter what darkness is doing God's light is going to shine greater God's mercy and God's healing and delivering power is going to rise up in a tsunami wave where it's literally going to astound us and the joy of the Lord is being restored to us you can be seated in Jesus name in Jesus name so now I'm just going to kind of push through here, and um, how much time can I take? I'm good? Okay. (laughs) Oh, you go till one. Okay. I didn't know that, and I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, I'm keeping them here. You're used to this. I'll just rest and uh, ha 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 ha. You almost got out of here early. <laughs> Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Now let me tell you something about this because um, the other scripture that He gave me. Now you have to recognize. Do you recognize that I'm giving you scriptures that are thirty-five one because I woke up at three fifty-one? Okay. That's what the Lord led me to. I need you to see that because I'm trying to, I'm wanting to teach you. I'm wanting to impart something to you how God speaks in very mysterious ways. And if you'll sit with him and say, why did you wake me up at 351 and have me pray? And then he let me go back. Sometimes he'll tell me right then. Sometimes he doesn't tell me till later. It's like this treasure hunt with him. So the next scripture, and I'm going to get back to the story of Ruth, but I feel like I need to release more levels of promise and hope and then get to this place where this is such a miracle testimony and story that if you've missed it before, you're going to get it today. I just know it. Okay? So in Isaiah chapter 35, we'll start in verse 1. And this time I'm going to read from the Passion Translation. I've been reading mostly from the New American Standard, and then I go to the Passion. Sometimes the Amplified. I don't think there's Amplified today, but we're in the Passion. Verse 1 in Isaiah 35. The wilderness and dry land will be joyously glad. How many of you believe that? The desert will blossom like a rose and rejoice. Every dry and barren place will burst forth with abundant blossoms. Let me read to you what that bursting forth means, because you need to grab this. It's blossoming. It's the Hebrew word prak means to break forth and blooming. It can also mean to spread your wings and fly, to spread the wings and fly. Burst forth and fly. Spread your wings, eagles. Spread your wings and fly. We're not to be earthbound. This is what will happen to God's people in the last days. Once confined in the wilderness, they will break forth and blossom with beauty and glory as saints 
of the Most High. That's an interpretation of that part of the verse. The next part of verse 2 says, and they will dance and spin with delight. And that word there, dancing and spinning, literally, literally means to make music and to sing God's praises with the rhythm of drums, to break forth with dancing. It means spinning and delighting in the Lord. How many of you want that? Is anybody going to be honest here and say you haven't been that spinning and delighting and you really want that back? Anybody going to be honest? Good. Because your honesty with God opens the door for him to make way. He told me, don't you deny what you're feeling. Don't you deny your pain. Don't you deny the anguish. Don't you deny the discouragement. Bring it to my altar. Bring it to me. Give it to me. And let me work in you what you can't work up. Let me process through you. Let me work in you. Let me take you through the process. I'm not going to leave you there, Tracy Ann. I've got promise for you. He's not going to leave you here, people of God. He is so for you. He is so for you. And then it goes on to say, Lebanon's lush splendor covers it. The magnificent beauty of Carmel and Sharon. My people will see the awesome glory of Yahweh, the beautiful grandeur of our God. Strengthen those who are discouraged. And literally means strengthen the weak hands. And it'll remind you of Hebrews 12, 12 through 13, when you read this verse in Isaiah 35, 3. Energize those who are defeated or make firm those feeble knees. That's what God's doing today. Say to the anxious and fearful, be strong and never afraid. Look, here comes your God. He is breaking through to give you victory. He comes to avenge your enemies. With divine retribution, he comes to save you. Then blind eyes will open and deaf ears will hear. Then the lame will leap like playful deer, and the tongue tied will sing songs of triumph. Gushing water will spring up in the wilderness, and streams will flow through the desert. The burning sand will become a freshing oasis. Ah, hallelujah. The parched ground, bubbling spring, and the dragon's lair, a meadow. This land will become a meadow. It will no longer be a dragon's lair and will be filled with grass and reeds and papyrus. There will be a highway of holiness called the sacred way. The impure will not be permitted on this road, but it will be accessible to God's people. And not even fools will lose their way. The lion will not be found here. That's the enemy. Hi. No wild beasts will travel on it. They will not be found there, but the redeemed will find a pathway on it. Yahweh's ransom ones will return with glee to Zion. They will enter with a song of rejoicing. And here you go. Take this. This is what's getting restored to you today. And be crowned with everlasting joy. And be crowned with everlasting joy. These are crowns we will give the Lord, you guys. We are his reward. I want to live my life that the Lord Jesus would receive the reward of his suffering. He suffered much. So I want to overcome every place the enemy tries to take me out. Because Jesus paid for it. And I believe him. And I've seen him do it. You'll be crowned with everlasting joy, and ecstatic joy will overwhelm them. And weariness and grief will disappear. How many need weariness and grief to disappear? How? No, I'm telling you. How many of you last year, it was like you just couldn't get the energy to do much, right? It's like, Lord, where is the energy of the Holy Spirit? Or even recently, well, guess what? He's restoring it. I say to my husband the other day, I said, I'm feeling so good these days. 
God's restored the crown of joy, that joy of the Lord. Miracle working power, miracle working power, Jesus. How faithful is our God. How faithful is our God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I bind every demonic entity that is trying to stop the move of God or the miracles for working right now in Jesus' name. And I release the power of faith and the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, for those of you that have uh, been having issues, maybe, maybe you... Maybe it's from, maybe you had gotten COVID and your lungs right now. I just want to speak to lungs. Anyone here? When I'm going to speak online, I just feel this tightness in the chest. Who is that? Okay. Because we can't, listen, God, if I'm, the Lord tells me to stop the message to release power for healing, it's here and it's here. I know you're sitting there and your your sin is be saying, that's me, that's me. And I'm just saying right now in the name of Jesus, loose those lungs right now, resurrection breath into the lungs right now in Jesus' name. Resurrection breath in Jesus' name. Resurrection breath. I'm going to tell you a story, you guys. A couple nights ago, I put on the Christian television. You need to hear this. Don't be ashamed. There is no shame. You need to hear this. This is an amazing testimony of God. This man has been serving the Lord for 70 years. 70 years. I'm like, Lord, I don't even remember his name because I just saw Jesus and the Holy Spirit all over him. They were doing this whole celebration of this man. And he says, I just want to see more of God. And he began to talk about the miracles he's seen. So he had to be 80 or 90 because when did he start? Somewhere between 80 to 90. Did he, start, did he start ministering at 10 or did he start at 15 or at 20, right? So, but you know how Pastor Fred always calls me, the, you know, like the leaping, you know, and sometimes that anointing that comes. Here's this man where the Spirit of God came on him, where he's living in this realm, and it's available for all of us, and there's no shame if we're not there, but why wouldn't we want to get there? Listen, I don't want to be an angry, bitter person. And I'm not going to let the enemy shame me. He tried last year with that fall. Look at you. You think you're a preacher. They call you pastor. They call you prophet. Look at you. I'm like, get behind me. God says I'm his daughter, and he says I will overcome. And he's how promises many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from them all. He didn't say, I only deliver them from some, and then I make them suffer. That's not what the word of God says. He says, I deliver them from them all. Who wants to step into the all? You guys, if you could grasp that, what would it do to this county? What would it do to this region? How would it affect this state and the nation and the nations? How, what would it do for all of these nations? What would it do if we could grasp the enemy feared you? He feared your DNA. He feared your passion. He feared your ability to see heaven. So he came with all these lies and debilitating things to try to take you out. And he sent in the most demonic, atrocious, Awful things that have been done to nation after nation in this nation. Horrible things, but that was never God. That was Satan. And it was never a white man. It was Satan. We have been duped. God is good. So what would happen if we stopped living in shame and if we stopped living as victims and if we stopped hating each other and seeing each other as others and started seeing each other as one another's and started moving in this place of believing God and his miracle working power that will come upon us. What if 
I sat in my prayer chair and began to pray and believe the scriptures of miracles and healings and what Jesus said, the greater works that I would do. What if I believed him and prayed with him? And even if my prayer was weak and simple, if he's on it, there's power. And let me tell you, every prayer breathed to God. Every little cry to Jesus, whether it's a loud shout or a little whisper, he hears. He hears. He hears. I'm telling you, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost coming across. And when I saw this again, pulling down the strongholds, I'm like, today's the day. You've been praying. You've been praying. You've been praying. You've been fasting. Today's the day. Let the move of God sweep across and let the hate stop. And let us be like Jesus, Father. Forgive them, they know not what they do. And Lord God, release your resurrection power and overturn those graves and overturn those iniquities and sicknesses. You have healing in your hands, you know why? Because Christ is in you. And if Christ is in you, nothing can stand against you. So as I came out of this season and I've come out strong, strong and stronger and fiercer. Actually, probably a little more fiercer because mm, you've been so mean to people and you're turning families against each other. Oh, I just want to take more people into the kingdom of heaven and tear down more strongholds because God is so good. And I've seen the goodness of God. I've seen the goodness of God. He continues. He continues and he continues to appear. And so, Lord, I God, I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father God. I thank you, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper in every tongue that rises to accuse us and condemn us. You condemn, Lord Jesus. You condemn, Lord Jesus. I thank you, God, for your word. I thank you, God, for your living word, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, today, when the, when the Father's saying to, to us, you're something, who are you? Can you hear Jesus asking this question, who's your father? Who is your father? I heard the Lord asking this question in the spirit realm this year. Who's your father? Because who we run to and who we trust and who we listen to is our father. And in this day and age, people have people on television. They have Buddhas. They have yogis. All these different things are their father. But Jesus was always revealing the Father, our Father. So is our Father our Father? As we honor Father's Day, as we honor the fathers, as we honor the men of God, let's honor our Father, our Heavenly Father. And so when you look at the story of Ruth and you see what a good, good father we have. That's so funny. Um, thank you, Jesus. So now I'm back to Ruth chapter 4. <laughs> Did you like the bunny trail? <laughs> it's all part of the message. It's just not in the order that I put it <laughs> or he put it. He's just, he's got a message he wants. There's an impartation, you guys. There's such a strong impartation. And it's interesting because I can feel the resistance of the enemy, yet I feel the power of the God, of God being like a breaker. I feel him wanting to break through every place of resistance. I feel him wanting to release the river of life in every tributary in this land. You know, I feel him wanting to release that spirit of truth. I feel the Lord wanting to release this miracle working power. I know it's right here. I so strong. Yet, the enemy would want to keep us in doubt and unbelief and thinking it's never going to change. Such a lie. I was the one in the family that was probably the most hopeless, the most lost, 
And I was the first one to get saved. <laughs> the most hopeless, the most lost, the most wretched sinner in my family. I'd been taught it and put in it and punished for things that I didn't do. So when I got punished for things that I didn't do, I started doing them. I'm like, if you're going to beat me for it. <laughs> I was a wretched, wretched sinner until Jesus came. And I almost died. I almost died a couple times. One was at the hands of a man who beat me to near death. Hemorrhaging. Had to have surgery. It's when I called out to God. So listen, I know pain. Another time was in a car accident. The car was upside down. They had to cut me out with the sh jaws of life. I had told my friend I was too intoxicated to drive. They said, just follow me. You'll be okay. I wasn't. And another time was when I was modeling, and my modeling agent set me up with a photographer. And I heard a voice behind me say, don't go. And I was supposed to meet this photographer on the shores in Florida to do a photo shoot. And I didn't go because the voice that I heard, I trusted. I didn't know God then. A few months later, they caught that man, and my name was in his book. And he was the beauty queen killer. He was a serial killer. If I had gone to that photo shoot, if I did not listen to that voice of God, I would not be standing here today. Listen, he's tried to take me out more than once. But God, and I can tell you of the transforming power of God, who can heal every place where woundedness and rejection and beatings I was bullied in school. I know that pain. But God, and what is my main mandate? Love. <laughs> and what flows from the Father's heart out of my life the most? Love. So if he can do this for me, you guys, he can do this for you. So I'm not coming from a place of having lived the perfect American dream life, okay? I'm coming from the place of an overcomer and one who knows God, one who could have had fame different ways many times but didn't choose that path. <laughs> when I got saved, I was like, God, if you're real and let me live, wherever you s send me, I will go. And that's how I'm living. You should live that way too. Now I talk to you about miracle working power. Ruth chapter 4, verse 13 through 16. So Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. And he went into her and the Lord enabled her to conceive and she gave birth to a son. Then the woman said to Naomi, blessed is the Lord who has not left you without a redeemer today. And may his name become famous in Israel. May he also be to you a restorer of life and a sustainer of your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you and is better to you than seven sons has given birth to him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him in her lap and became his nurse. We're going to go on to, because we have to read his name. The neighbor women gave him a name saying, a son has been born to Naomi. So they named him Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. And now these are the generations of Perez. To Perez was born Hezron. And to Hezron was born Ram. And to Ram and Min Minadab. And to Minadab was born Nishan, and to Nishan, Salmon, and to Salmon was born Boaz, and to Boaz, Obed. 
And to Obed was born Jesse, and to Jesse, David. Hallelujah. And that's just one good part. Do you feel the presence of the Lord just come into this place like, whoa, whoa. Obed means worshiper. Obed means service. When Obed is born and Naomi brings Obed to her chest, a miracle happens. Delight opens the way for miracles. A miracle happens when she holds worship close to her breast and she is able to nurse. It was a miracle. This wasn't her child. She is able to nurse. We are delivered from arrogance and bitterness and disappointment, things that block the view of God's vision. We are restored into delight and pleasant, pleasantness through our worship unto God. Our worship is service unto Lord. Any service we do unto the Lord, whether it's cleaning our house, cooking a meal for our family, going to work to provide, this is what fathers do. Whatever we do, we go to the garden to till the field. We come into the house of God and put the vacuum. We go to the grocery store and pick up something and take to a neighbor who can't get out. That's worship unto God. And that service and that act of worship releases miracle working power. It's a miracle. And it delivers us from self centered places. When we focus on disappointment, Sickness and the things that happen, we become bitter. But when we come to the Lord with thanksgiving, praise, and worship, he heals and restores us and turns us into a very miracle that miracles can flow in us and to us and then through us. And miracles can flow through us even before our healings. There's been healings I've pressed in for that I would pray for others and see them get healed of what I needed before I got healed. <laughs> don't know how that works, but it does. Truly, there is pre there's the fullness of joy in the presence of the Lord. So I want to give you a testimony, and then I want to close with a decree over you. In April is when real huge breakthrough really came for me. It already begun at the beginning of the year. As December ended and January began and even though I was still in in that pain at that time and there were things weren't some things weren't easy but I was beginning to be healed God just began to speak and I saw the heavens opening over his people again I saw where the heavens had been brass where the heavens had been closed begin to open up in the promises of God, we would begin to see them manifest. And we would see God move in a really beautiful and powerful way. So I had had a couple dreams that I was to go to South Carolina. And I was sitting before the Lord. I was asking him where I was to go. Was I to go and be with a fellowship of ministries that I'd been a part of for 20 years? Or was I to go and be with some um, friends and do, min you know, what was it he was saying? And he made, and then he gave me another dream that made it very clear I was to go to the gathering of leaders um, and for this face-to-face -face gathering on 418. I got on a plane and I went to South Carolina and I penned these words. It's not what I'm ending with. Because on the way home, he gave me what I'm going to end with. And I'm going to share with you what happened there. And what I get to release to you. So I wrote this. He said, we're going to be entering a reboot system season. I've just, I'm, all, I'm just completing a book called The Divine Re, The More Excellent Way. Because God began to speak to me in 2018, 2019, really clearly in 2019, that we were entering a divine re. The enemy called it, calls it his reset, and we've taken it for a holy reset, right? 
But this divine re is God repositioning us with him and repositioning us to his way and repositioning us with his heart. So in 418, he said to me, reboot. Reboot means to restart. It's to make a change in order to, here's the word again, establish a new beginning. So this is what God's doing in us. And I wrote a crown, a king, a signet ring at the top under reboot. And that was a word that the Lord had given me in January of 2015. One that I'd walked in for, quite, for what, four years? And then, and then it was like I'm not walking in that. <laughs> and it was like what happened? It's been restored. A crown, a king, a signet ring. Overcoming grace is being rebooted. Righteous authority, favor of the lamb. Live from this place of grace, overcoming every battle by the blood. Overcoming every trial by testimony and praise. Overcoming every test by dying daily. Take up your cross. Come follow me. Come and see what I reveal to perceive. Come forth with joy. The garments of grief discard. Washed and cleansed in crimson tide. Waves of glory love. Freedom's banner, hope's canopy, fiery shamar. All encompassing all around. Hope's helmet, turban of authority, crowned in loving kindness. That's the word he gave me on 418. On 422, the speaker, Chris Reed, began to speak. Well, I have to tell you what was happening before then. In the afternoon, all afternoon, I kept feeling this presence of the Lord on my head. And I kept feeling almost like some, some wind or someone was, you know, probably maybe an angel was there or the spirit of the Lord was breathing. And I kept saying, Lord, what are you doing? What are you saying? Lord, what are you doing? What are you saying? And I just kept posturing myself. What are you doing? What are you saying? Because I, I knew he was doing something. And then, the, then in the evening session, it was the final session of our leaders, leadership retreat, and then he began to speak about the crowns of the Lord. And as he began to speak, I began to weep as the presence of the Lord came over me. And in that moment, he took me back to January 2015 when he had awakened me and spoke that word. A crown, a king, a signet ring. And the whole world word is about the authority we gain from going through trials and testing. And I had just passed a major one. He's like, you've overcome. You just passed a major one. You know, and sometimes you think you're not going to go through more. That's just not it, is it? <laughs> and here we have been in this one. And I'm weeping. And the Spirit of the Lord is saying, I am restoring to you. What I just read to you in Isaiah 35, I am restoring this crown of joy to you. I am restoring the crown of what I've put upon your life. I am taking you, I'm, I'm restoring everything. The enemy tried to take you out because you walked in authority and he feared how you walked. So he came against with all this stuff. And that's what he tries to do. But we're supposed to count it all joy and persevere and stand until the Lord comes and breaks through for us, because he will. So I received that impartation back that night. And I knew that I knew, because, I mean, I was just quietly weeping and shaking under the presence of God as he was restoring the anointing the, and, the, and the place and the position. Because you understand, how many of you see in the spirit in here? A few of you. For those of us that see in the spirit, we recognize the enemy also recognizes us in the spirit. And in the spirit, we don't look like this. And we don't look broken if we're broken here. Our spirit man is not broken. And yet, God clothes us with certain things. And I know for me, one of the things I, I want to wear is the garment of humility. So the enemy recognized the authority that you walk in. And so when there's certain things, he'll come stronger after to you. It's not fun, but it happens. But he fears those who know who God is. 
So then on the way home, the Lord said, pick up your pen again. And he had me, um, he had me pen this. And this is, they're fine. They're okay. Oh, they're so cute. I want to hold them. <laughs> he had me pin this from the it is finished posture. I'm going to release this over you. The it is finished posture. What does yes look like? Surrender, trust, obedience. It is hearing the words of Jesus. It is finished it is seeing Jesus standing as hope right beside those who have been crushed by despair, disappointment, and doubt. It is seeing Jesus saying, peace be with you. The Prince of Peace releasing peace. Peace is the essence of wholeness. It is confidently knowing his yes has accomplished the will of our Father, and he will accomplish it in us. And he will do through us all he desires. This is all a steadfast yes, surrendering with our yes. So here is the it is finished posture decree. No fear. No fear. Yoli prayed what we prayed this morning. The spirit of the Lord was, was we're praying. We prayed bold Courage, bold courage, no fear, absolute trust. It is complete abiding, no more hiding from destiny. Those of you that try to hide, no more hiding. The only hiding hidden in Christ, in the rock, his split open side, seated right beside him, secure, safe, sheltered, stable, holding on to hope, the anchor of our soul, staying steady in every storm, confident in every promise, trusting our Father as Holy Spirit leads us in Christ to his overcoming outcome, living in light, not afraid of the night, truly love has overcome. The victory is sure a love illusion of fiery, burning, bright, blood-bought warriors. Who? <laughs> right? This is how we know the truth has made us free. We live in holy peace. Shar Shalom, our bright morning star. Peace is with us. Peace be with you. Peace breathes new life upon hearts once dead to life, but now dead to sin, alive in Christ, living clothed in the promise of our Father. For his fullness is our inheritance, and we are his signet ring of authority, crowned with loving kindness, pierced through with the truth. It is finished. Love has won the day. No lie can prosper. Where truth dwells, no sorrow remains. Where hope bursts forth, let faith say, I am finished. It is a new day. And do you know how we say, I am finished? We receive the complete work of Jesus Christ. And we receive his fullness. And we're working out our salvation but of his fullness we have all received in grace upon grace, John 1, 16. And if you read Colossians and you read Galatians and you read Ephesians and you read all of these promises of what our inheritance is, doesn't matter what your earthly inheritance and what you didn't get. You've got everything that Jesus is releasing to you, the fullness of Christ. So we can, he says, you're finished so one of the revelations I've received in this season is a new stance of warfare. Jesus said, the enemy's coming, but there's nothing in me. Well, if I'm in Christ, and Christ is in me, and there's nothing in Christ, 
then I can stand in that place with the armor of God and with Christ who is in me, the hope of glory. Christ who's in me. He says, abide in me and I'll abide in you. Then I can also say, wait a minute, I'm in Christ and there's nothing in me because Christ is in me. Leave me alone in Jesus' name. It is finished. It is finished. So, Father, we stand in this place of the it is finished posture. And, Father, I am believing that you have released the miracles you said you were going to do today. They may not have manifested fully yet, but, God, I know that you are faithful to your word and I want to believe and receive everything you have said. And I believe and release everything you have said. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in this world. So if greater is he who is in me than he who is in this world, no weapon that's formed against us shall prosper because you're the greater one. So, Lord, I'm thanking you, Lord God, that you will bring us through everything. We had to go through some things to get to the other side of promise. We had to go through dark night of soul, grief, and sorrow, Lord, that we can now see, Lord God, the delight and the beauty of who you are as you restore, as you bring recompense, as you bring the revelation, as you reignite our hearts, as you remake our way, as you remake our day, as you remake and lead us on our path, as you bring us into divine revelation of who you are. So, Father, on this Father's Day, we honor you, and we honor every father, every father who has nurtured any child, Lord God. And we pray, Father, that your spirit would come upon them, and the promise of the Father, the promise of the Father would come upon all your people. You promised, Lord God, that you would pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and it is the promise of the Father is the power of the Holy Spirit. So, Lord, I ask that you would come and that you would move and that you would do what only you could do. And we give you all the glory and all of the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I, I, I just want you all to take, take the word of God, the life and the truth. Amen? Because, because like the prophet is saying, that this is a timely word. It's a now word. And how does now come? You have to move. You have to be the one reaching for it. You have to one be the one you know, like striving for it. You have to be the one that wants it. Amen? You have to be the one that wants it. You have to be the one that receives it. So I want to encourage you all to take this word. Amen? And chow on it. Chew on it. Amen? Be a cow. Be a cow. Keep it in you. Amen. I know that sounds funny, but I, I just know that's a word from God that, you know, you have you got to turn on it. Bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it back. Amen. Because God knows what he's doing. Amen. That's a timely word. A timely word. Amen. E even down to the scriptures. We, we had those scriptures in our in our clarion call. Amen. The 35. Amen. Psalms 35. Isaiah 35. Amen. So God knows what he's doing. And, and I, I just thank you. I, I thank you. I give you honor today. I know it's Father's Day, but you, you are a woman of God, a mama. And so I honor you today. And I say thank you. I receive that word. Amen. I receive the impartation today. Amen. If you miss out, you know what? You're going to be at the altar, but we need to be at the mercy seat, even down to mercy seat. Amen. So I, I, that, I just want to end with that. I want to say God bless. Amen. God bless. Bless the fathers. Amen. And just, and God is good. God is good. And I know each one of you got some, and that's what God wants you to receive. Amen. God knows what he's doing. God knows every word you need. Amen. And I know that. I know. I've been with you all here. I've prayed for you all here, and I know that that word was for you. And don't let it pass you by. Pick it up. Amen. Pick it up. Receive it. Receive it. Get out of the way and let God move. Amen. The anew, the anew is now bringing us back to the beginning of what he intended. 
Amen. So I thank you once again. I thank you. Amen. Let's just close. Father God, we just thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you that you are our healer, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all you've done on the cross. It's still for us today, Lord. And we just honor you, Lord. We honor you with your word, Father God. Lord, just, just put it in us today, Lord God, that we will not let we will not let the enemy steal our time with you. We will not. And today we plead the blood that the enemy will not steal this word from us in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, bless your children. Bless your people, Lord. And we just give honor and thanks to you, the Father in heaven, the one true Father. Amen. The, the Father who loves, loves us unconditionally. And I just praise you, Lord. I thank you for your word today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And for you daddies in the house, eh, the um, children's church has made you a couple of bags, you know, uh, made you a bag just honoring to you today. So grab one of those before you go out. Amen. And let's give, let's give the Lord and, uh, and pass. God bless. Amen.